So this is a 43-year-old lady with significant cholestasis and symptoms with what's presumed to be a benign distal bile duct stricture, which we've imaged with axial imaging. She's had two failed ERCPs in our institution, one with a needle knife a few months ago, and then a subsequent uh, failed ERCP after that with a sort of indrawn papilla. So our plan here is to get biliary access and use EUS. Now, there's the bile duct, and this is the stricture. It sort of just comes into a bit of thickened distal bile duct here. So there is a history of ketamine and that would sort of fit with this because there doesn't look to be certainly no mass here and the bilet wall just looks a wee bit thickened and there's there's the papilla because there's pangolinic duct coming off and coming around the corner off past the confluence there into the body of the pancreas so this is pangolinic duct following down then we hit papilla here and then this tethered bile duct. so it does not look sinister but it's she's cholestatic and I think it needs to be remodelled and stented. So if I was to do a ron traditional rendezvous here, I would be heading in a retrograde direction and almost certainly would have a situation whereby it would be impossible to get the wire to come into the duodenum. She hasn't got that dilated intrahepatics, so going a transgastric rendezvous I think would be flawed in terms of getting access to the left side. One can sometimes pull short, so we get into duodenum, pull into the short scope position from the second part of the duodenum and so you're aiming anti-grade but then you've got a very unstable scope position and if the wire falls out you've got a peri biliary leak situation because you've had a 19 gauge needle in and you're no further forward so if you lose the wire on the exchange in that point you've got problems um, so what we might try and do is put a hot axios cholidoca duodenostomy in and then either at this visit or a subsequent visit, depending on time and tolerance and so on, we can do a rendezvous through the axios. I'm just conscious of that little structure there, so we'd want to be superior to that. So we'll do a cholangiogram. Can I have a 19? So a 19 helps here because it shows you exactly where the tip of your axios is going to be when it comes out. So in terms of distance from duct, it shows you the trajectory of, of what the axios will be. It shows you how close the axios will be. It shows you that the saddle length is going to be less than six millimetres or eight millimetres, which is what the six millimetre hot axios saddle length is. So on every level, getting a 19 gauge needle down can really help, not least delivering a cholangiogram. So now I can just bring out the sheath of the 19. Okay, so that tells us that we're very close. There's the tip of the 19 there. I don't have the needle out. This is just the sheath. So that tells us we're nice and close to the bile duct. Furthermore, I think we're well out of the way of those vessels, which was round the corner to the left. So if we are going to send the axios over a wire here, we don't want it to be too perpendicular to the duct because the axios has to take the angle and go up to liver to deliver the distal flange. So let's just check vessels again. So I want to go even higher here, there. And you can see us tenting the duct there. So let's just make our puncture. Okay, and we're going to open up our syringe. And we've got bile, that's no surprise, so let's swap that out. We always get a bit of air in this. Can I have just saline? Of course, putting a bit of saline in descends things up a little bit for you. You don't want too much contrast in the duct either. Stop screening because your distal flange of your axios is not desperately radio opaque. Okay, let's go with the 025. Here we go, I can feel it. And I'm not too worried about the wire shearing here because it's, it's 025. So I can, f I, can't, I can feel it against the needle bit of resistance but it's not shearing and that just wants to go up to liver please and again an angle beautiful of the angle tip you can just sort of torque it and get it down like that which might be difficult with a straight wire great so now it's time to exchange I'm going to check with it before the uh, axios is out the device just to check that the trajectory of the wire is not near any vessels good we can see the axios there because it hook me up then please Screen now. So we're going to do the distal flange on fluoro as much as anything. See, that, see how radio 
loosened it is. Then we're coming back. This will now come back onto EUS, stop screening. Then we're going to do step four, which is proximal flange in the scope. And then we're going to look out, see the braids on the right with some clockwise torque and we're in. And there's the bile. I always keep my wire until we know what we're dealing with. So that's a, a method that I favour for a small bile duct for a colidoco duodenostomy in this case in benign disease, to facilitate a rendezvous. I would always leave a coaxial pigtail in the axios to prevent food impaction and so on. This method, we'll see if we're successful on the next visit, but I think it would have been a high-risk, tricky PTD into non-dilated ducts and a week in hospital and all the rest of it, then another procedure of rendezvous. I do hope that we manage this way to get across the papilla. So you just have to be careful that you do not looping that too early, so getting close, just as if you're doing an ERCP pigtail. We've got plenty of wire in here, so it should flick. Screen, please. I can always... Yeah, we're up there, aren't we? Okay, end of part one. Let's just have a hard x-ray there. Beautiful. So, EUS, CDS, part one of a rendezvous.